Keeti and welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'll be giving you some mental health book recommendations. Now, before I begin, I just want to say that mental health is something our generation, our Gen Z, the millennial generation, constantly struggles with. We may read articles, we browse through videos, but yet we cannot grasp enough information. The best way to know about mental health is to consult a psychiatrist only for your general emotional wellness not because you have some issue it would help you stay stable in life so that's why but the best way to understand how someone who has mental health issues uh, goes through is to read a book you will understand what a person actually feels and you will develop empathy towards them so that is why I made this video of book recommendations and so I will start with the very first book recommendation. It is my very first favorite book. It's The Perks of Being a Wallflower. It's a book by Stephen Chosky. Uh, I'm reading it wrong, I guess. It's a, a book of the three characters. The central character is Charlie. And he has some teenage angst. And uh, it's mostly revolving around high school. It's a YA fiction. So it's a great book to understand how a person who is going through the phase of growing up goes through so you can read this the second is veronica decides to die by paulo coelho i think there is a movie on this uh, veronica attempts suicide and lands up in a mental asylum and what happens there does she overcome it is there in this book it's a very beautiful book it's poetic and you will just think about it, what happens with her after reading this. The third book I want to recommend is All the Bright Places from the Goodreads uh, description. There was written Eleanor and Park meets the Fault in Our Stars. So that is it. In this book, there are two teenagers uh, who struggle with mental health issues. Um, one, I think one had PTSD and the other had some survivor's guilt and uh, how they go through uh, their life and they had some issues how they overcome it what happens in the end is in this book it is a lot like the fortune and stars even it's written on the book so you can try reading this if you want to read another fortune and stars but with the theme of mental health Okay, this, uh, The Girl on the Train, it's a psychological thriller. It's not really uh, a mental health read, but it's like uh, this girl, uh, I think her name is Rachel. So what happens to her is she is going through alcoholism and some issues that had happened with her. So that is the story. I slightly forgot the story, <laughs> but you can read it. It will give you a glimpse into what a person who's going through some heartbreak or turmoil goes through. Now, this turtles all the way down. I am sure most of you must have heard about it. It's a book about a girl named Aza. She has OCD, the Obsessive Compulsive Disorder Tendencies and Anxiety. So, I think there was one instance in the book when she thinks of how uh, how many germs our mouth emits and all such gross thoughts which we eventually have but we do not say it out loud. So, you like you can get from the spiral, this uh, goes deep into the head of that person named Aza and uh, throughout this book there is no mention of the word OCD uh, although the plot wise the book was very weak very very weak but if you want to get it to get a glimpse of what goes in, inside the person's head who has OCD uh, so you can read this book for that and that would help you understand how a person perceives things who has OCD okay Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. Uh, this book is slightly funny, uh, and uh, but I did not find it that funny because the humor is mostly the British humor. I could not connect with it. Not my fault. So the the book is very thick. Almost 80% of the book there is uh, nothing happening. 
there is uh, something with the central character uh, Eleanor Oliphant which you will find odd throughout the book but at the very end of it you will find something which led her to this so this book is about how childhood how our childhood can affect you can see this house it is a symbolism of her childhood home so how it can affect a person to this manner that it can lead to mental illness and mental health issues so you can read this book for that uh, although i was thinking if but you will have to bear uh, slight 80% of it to find the end the end is shocking i'm sure most of you must have read the, this or might have seen the series 13 reasons why it's uh, of 13 tapes and but i found this book very depressing but it tells you what uh, it tells you uh, how the girl what was her name hannah <laughs> hannah so how uh, in school she goes through some there are some rumors against her how she faces molestation and some there was how she trusts people but ends up getting betrayed that was in this book it was very depressing but i could not stand this book it was very depressing but you will understand how someone who's going through such issues you will um, like it if you <laughs> if you want to read a mental health recommendation then this is it for you last but not the least the bell jar it's a book about depression it's by sylvia plath it's an autobiographical book and uh, i have not read it yet but i have heard it's a brilliant read it explains in detail about how someone with depression sees things <laughs> i'm yet to read it and i'm very eager to understand more and through these books i I'm sh uh, sure that you will develop empathy towards people who have such issues. So that is it for this video. I hope I could help you. And if I did, then please leave your comments below. <laughs> I would appreciate it. And do subscribe to my channel for more such book recommendation, my own poetry, and many more things. Thank you.